so what I hear you saying is that there is an infection process that can play a role in rheumatoid arthritis. Definitely. Is that the majority of the time? Is that the minority of the time? Does anyone have any idea how big the scope of that problem is in terms of there being an infectious etiology for rheumatoid arthritis? I think that's starting to be generally accepted that there's a, a factor there. Uh, I know that uh, the uh, various drugs that come out, uh, the TNF uh, drugs, the tumor necrosis factor drugs, the uh, uh, cytokine blockers, that's all part of the inflammation process. When infection strikes, we got uh, chemicals like interleukins and, and uh, a TNF that combine to produce cortisol and cortisol. There's a big loop going on there uh, in the infection process. So they have some of the key elements, but all they do is, the drugs do is block those. They don't look, peel the onion and look uh, further into the, the cause. And they don't test for mycoplasma, which is one of the, the big culprits. And there's various types of uh, mycoplasma that are resident in the synovial fluid of the joints. I don't well, know if that answered that. But it, it does, and unfortunately I can relate to that since mycoplasma pneumonia was the one that almost killed me. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you may recall, that was a hospital-acquired infection that um, uh, nearly killed me and took uh, more than two years to diagnose. This is something that we wow. discuss in my documentary, Why Am I Still Sick? So again, it's something I'm sensitive to, but I also know that a lot of people uh, just don't accept this notion of infection playing a role in various arthritic syndromes and that's it's frustrating uh, but that you know that highlights uh, perhaps some opportunities uh, what I've seen is molecular diagnostics some of these newer technologies really advancing considerably in the last couple of years and frankly finding uh, a lot of other pathogens that um, until now weren't really known about so can you comment on uh, some of the diagnostics that uh, have been available or are available that patients, patient advocates, and doctors should know about? Well, I have a whole chapter on diagnostic tests. And uh, first of all, I'll, I will uh, tell people to look at allergies because allergic reactions can really uh, mimic arthritis symptoms. Your joint pain uh, increases, uh, you have chronic fatigue, you just feel inflammation all over. That could be a gluten allergy. So be sure that it's what it seems to be. Uh, but there are a wide variety of tests. PCR, polymerase chain reaction test, is considered the gold standard for uh, a testing CRP, as we mentioned, uh, the R factor. There's neutrophil uh, testing, the numbers of uh, cell counts and all this. Uh, there's many ways to get at this problem. Some people even get tested for Lyme disease, but that's iffy, as you know. You can get false positives, false negatives, and uh, one of the interesting things is that uh, they have found digestive uh, antigens to a GI tract uh, infections in synovial fluid. Things like Shigella and Borrelia, which is a Lyme disease uh, um, contributor. Hopefully, people, uh, medical professionals are looking more at a holistic view of the body. Uh, typically, doctors get trained in the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, and the immune system doesn't reside in just one place like an organ does. It's dispersed all through the body, and uh, everything plays together. I'm a systems engineer by, t by training and trade, and so is my husband. So we may have an advantage of not being in the medical establishment to start out with because we don't recognize those crazy boundaries of the heart, the kidneys. And uh, we can see where these organisms are garrisoned in various organs of the body, not just the joints. And uh, even your specialty, biofilms, where several different kinds of organisms that aren't normally found together have a, achieved a symbiotic relationship and they do things for each other, and they're, they're kissy-kissy here, and uh, what benefits one uh, may be to the detriment of the other, but then they'll say, well, next time around, you know, I'll protect you. And uh, it's, uh, it's a very cozy thing. With this biofilm protecting them, antibiotics can't always get through. The implication here is that 
mycoplasmas and other kinds of bacterial pathogens or even non-bacterial pathogens might be contributing to the fibromyalgia. Absolutely. Uh, until doctors get away from the cautious postulates, which is the, essentially a, one bug, one answer. Cox postulates. Yes. Sure. Or Coke if you're really German, right? I don't know. You know <laughs> I, yes. <laughs> uh, maybe they only need to streamline that. Right. Diet Coke. So, so <laughs> to, to your point, one bug, one disease. I mean, that did work well in the 1800s. And of course, uh, Koch was a brilliant uh, scientist in, in mm -hmm. figuring that out. Nobel Prize. But we're finding today, not to put words in your mouth, but I guess I am, is that a lot of these infections are polymicrobial. We have yes. different bugs working together. We have the gram-negative bugs like Borrelia, um, gram-positive bugs like MRSA. We have fungi. We have basically everything but the kitchen sink. A stew. In a yes. community, usually a biofilm community, but we can also have other nasties somehow working with them like Chlamydia, how do you say it? Pneumonia, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but this, you know, not to joke about something yeah. so serious, we have figured out that um, for, I guess, more than three billion years, these guys have figured out how to work together cooperatively, right? Do yes. I have it right? Yes. And uh, enzyme therapy, which we have discussed uh, before, uh, that's very, very effective. Um, we, getting back to fibromyalgia, let me just insert something for the viewers, is that uh, of fibrolinitic enzymes, I think this is the way it works. I may be wrong, but it, they kind of create a little log jam. And unless you have something to break that log jam at those what they call trigger points, everybody with fibromyalgia will know what I'm talking about. Uh, just the slightest bit of pressure will, will hurt that. Right. And uh, you need something to, to break that up. And we've researched serapeptase as a way to uh, eliminate that. The silkworm. Enzyme. How about that? Right. So uh, to, let's carry that out a little bit further. What you're saying is these enzymes, which are over the counter that you can buy at retail stores and many other mm -hmm. places, mm -hmm. many of these can be effective remedies uh, to help the patient feel better and even get at these granulomas or whatever these little nasty fibrinogen complexes are mm -hmm. in, in the patient. Is that right? Yes. And not only that, we have several types of enzymes. We make them ourselves. We get them from foods. And uh, I know you're big on juicing and natural foods, and that's a very good thing. One of your questions pre-interview was, you know, how come people in other countries don't, uh, don't have these kinds of diseases? Well, uh, they eat a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. They don't have these refined foods with sugar added. Um, it always breaks me up uh, to look at a, a can of Ensure, for example. They get, give to the elderly and the rest home. They even give it to cancer patients who are recovering and it starts out with sugar, water and sugar and then there's some kind of a malodextrin or mal is a good prefix on this. <laughs> um, it, it ain't good. It ain't good if it's right. got sugar or, or dextrose or any right. of those kind of things. Um, and these sugar flavored drinks are just a killer for you. Not good. There's a wonderful uh, immunologist who has a lab in California. His name is uh, Dr. Aristo Vojdani. And he got into immunology and some of these factors because his mother had dental surgery and uh, shortly thereafter uh, came down and was uh, diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And he just was fascinated. What's the link here? There has to be a link. She eats well and all this stuff. The bacteria found their way in. and. Uh, any of our mucosal membranes, the nose, the eyes, the mouth, uh, and any openings here are just gateways for bacteria. I indeed, I just uh, recently met a dentist who gave me an article that goes way back to the 1970s. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a heart surgeon, I, I believe it was Dr. Uh, Lloyd Rudy, who found uh, just crazy numbers of pathogens in the excised heart valves mm -hmm. from patients. And he was uh, perhaps prescient enough, wise enough to actually do uh, cultures on these uh, gooey biofilms. And even at that time, though culturing is limited to just 6% of detecting all bacteria, mm -hmm. they found all kinds of bacteria in there that were native to the mouth. 